Rural Pact is the second avenue we proposed to, to implement uh, the long-term vision. And this idea starts from the recognition that as Commission, we cannot do it alone. Most of the responsibilities to achieve the shared goals of the rural vision actually lie in the hands of the other levels of government and of stakeholders themselves. Um, so uh, what is the Rural Pact? It's a framework to, uh, to, to foster cooperation between national, regional and local governments, civil society organizations, businesses, academics and stakeholders to act together towards the goals of this uh, rural vision. It was always meant to be a bottom-up uh, process, so we organized it in a participatory way. We started by creating this rural pact community, which you may know, to discuss what it should be. We had brainstorming sessions also with other EU institutions and bodies uh, and came up with a proposal that was discussed and endorsed at the first rural pact conference in June 22. Most of you are, are familiar with this. So what does the proposal say? It introduces three objectives for this rural pact. The first one is to amplify the voice of rural areas and make them better heard and acted upon uh, in the policy making. The second one is networking, collaboration, mutual learning to make sure people can build on the successes of others and also learn from their failures maybe. And the third one is to encourage voluntary commitments to act for the shared goals of the, of the rural uh, vision. Who are we talking about in this pact? Uh, five main types of participants have been identified. Public authorities are the key one, national, regional, local level authorities, civil society organizations from rural areas, but also maybe from other areas who want to collaborate with rural areas, academics and research and innovation, businesses and citizens themselves. Uh, the rural pack community has grown. Uh, the slide is already outdated because I've been told yesterday that the community is now, we are now at 1,600 people um, and 80 uh, commitments have been submitted. So what it means to participate in the pact is to commit to take a specific action at your own level of capacity. Yeah? Uh, and we have received 80 such commitments uh, so far. I have statistics and figures on what these commitments are, but I'm not going to go through them, otherwise I'm in trouble. <laughs> because I would like, we would like, or we've been asked by the Swedish organizers today to focus on what this means, potentially for the public authorities, especially the national ones, or the bigger regions uh, with legislative uh, capacity or programming capacity. And so we have put down these ideas for discussion, really, today on what it could be. It's not, the idea is not to impose anything, but to propose what it could be, the things that we can see in several member states make rural policy more, more successful. If we look at amplifying the voice of rural people and make them better heard, um, what's useful is to have structures in place, democratic structures in place, to engage specific, specifically with rural communities in policy making. One good example is the uh, uh, rural policy council in Finland, for example. And on the other side, you need a receiving end, so to have a member of government who's um, accountable, responsible for rural uh, areas and ideally as well as service which is responsible for rural areas across policy fields, so not only agriculture but the, the whole strand of, of policies. So at regional level, for example, in, in the region Castilla-La Mancha, we have the vice president of the region who's in charge of, uh, of uh, uh, overlooking their uh, rural uh, policy. Uh, acting, the third objective for public authorities is very important because this is where we have the biggest capacity to take action for rural areas. And there what we see as being helpful is having a forward-looking vision in place like Ireland as um, uh, our rural future strategy. It's also to have a holistic, again cross-policy, strategy, action plan, program, agenda, doesn't really matter how it's called, uh, a series of things that are going to be uh, taken. So in France, for example, we have the National Rural Agenda, in Catalonia as well, and this is helpful. Now you have this program and you need to have mechanisms in place to coordinate horizontally between the different departments or ministries that, are, that need to be involved and vertically across governance levels. So this, everybody aligns to deliver on this, on this strategy. And funding is very important, so you need to coordinate the allocation of funding for action and ensure synergies between the different funds. So for coordination mechanisms, I think if we go look out already, whoa, <laughs> out of Europe, the best example is the Rural Partners Network in the USA. I can tell you more, if, if, uh, but not now. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and for funding the Italian strategy for inner areas, let's try to use the different uh, the funding stream for, for, this, uh, for this thing. 
And um, having rule proofing mechanism in place is also important because funding is one thing. Making sure that your legislation doesn't harm rural areas is also very important, as it is to have good rural data to power your rural proofing, your analysis, your policy making, your monitoring and evaluation. Um, and there I would, I would quote Finland as a, as a champion of, uh, of data as well. And finally, networking, collaboration, mutual learning. You need to have capacity building and support mechanisms in place to help the rural municipalities, localities access the funding because administrative capacities are lower there. And it's so complex, so you need to help. And networking structures that engage a broad array of stakeholders, rural but also thematic, um, uh, stakeholders from thematic fields is, is important. And our national rural networks are very helpful there. But it goes beyond the cap, so we need a broader partnership around uh, this uh, pact uh, and vision. And um, I'm done with this, and uh, what we have set up at EU level to facilitate this process is the Rural Pact Support Office. Ta-da! <laughs> so uh, Enrique uh, here uh, can tell you about what, uh, what they do. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. I'm very happy to, to be here. And I will try to follow up the, the very detailed explanation of uh, Alexia and colleagues from the, from the Commission and explain you a little bit what the Rural Pact Support Office is. We have seen that uh, uh, now in the Rural Vision we have put people at the centre of development in rural areas. The different actors in rural areas, they have very different needs. There are many opportunities for them. It, imp it implies moving beyond, as well, agriculture, although it's also at the centre, but there are also needs, I like to put it, uh, like farmers have wives, have kids, have grandparents, and they, all, they have also a lot of needs, and these needs need to be tackled. Uh, and so uh, the Rural Park aims to bring all these actors together, addressing all these different thematic areas. Um, and so we need to build a stronger and larger partnership to work for the benefit of rural areas. The Rural Pact Support Office is precisely in place in order to animate this big network, this bigger partnership, and try to address um, these different thematic areas, so to build capacity, to put and identify the issues of rural actors, to put them higher in the political agenda, to try to help local communities to commit, to act, uh, local communities, public authorities, civil society, academics, businesses, everybody. We need this moment to act for rural areas. The Rural Pact Support Office is a mechanism to animate such a big network and try to contribute uh, and help that this partnership contributes to the objectives that we set together at the Rural Pact Conference in the proposal. So you can see uh, it's uh, a support office that works for the community, but at the same time it, it will be complemented as well by a governance structure that we call the Rural Pact Coordination Group. It's not yet in place, there would be an expression of interest launch very soon for uh, the actors to apply to be a member of, of this uh, coordination group. It would be the main governance structure that will help us steer the activities uh, that we will conduct for the rural path community. So as you might understand, there would be it would be a very diverse group uh, taking into account all the stakeholder categories that uh, Alexia just, just mentioned and in particular as well those actors that want to commit to, to contribute to the rural pact. Um, I just want to show you that behind the Rural Pact Support Office, there is people as well working for it to work. Uh, and we have quite an extensive team based uh, in Brussels and some countries that will coordinate implementation of the activities that I will introduce later on. But also we have set up a network of national experts in each of the member states uh, to whom that you can, you can also contact and approach to really work these issues around the rural the rural pack. So we are there to help you. We have a contact detail, so you, you have someone behind to address uh, if, if you need uh, some support from us. Now, we, the support office uh, will implement a number of activities. Uh, all these activities are structured to contribute to the objectives of the Rural Pact. So in general terms, we will organize networking activities around events. These events, some of them would be focused at the political level. Some others would be focused more at practitioner's uh, perspective to try to, to, to build up capacities around these thematic areas that are highlighted in the vision. We will also uh, collect good practices. We will be looking at good practices that go beyond the CP. This is about broadening the partnership. It means bringing as well uh, new funds uh, 
towards uh, supporting rural development. So we will be looking at different ways of funding projects through European funds, national funds, new models for financing projects, crowdfunding, etc. We will coordinate the, the Rural Pact Coordination Group, so we will help to organize the, the gatherings of, of this group. We will be supporting those actors that want to uh, commit to act at, uh, uh, to contribute to the vision and the Rural Pact. We will try to promote these commitments, give visibility to those uh, committed actors that want to take the pact uh, forward. And as well, another important part of, of, of the work that we will do is around communication. Uh, and this is what we are trying to do here. We need to uh, clarify what the Rural Pact is about. We need to build an understanding among the actors so that they can contribute in a more meaningful way to this new way of looking and supporting rural areas. So we will be uh, as well publishing a, a magazine where we want to bring the voices of those actors working within the Rural Pact. We are producing monthly newsletters uh, where you get information about what's going on from other funds, different uh, projects, uh, opportunities for funding uh, that you might have available, etc. And as well, we conduct uh, uh, other uh, activities to really animate the, this, this big network uh, and coordinate as well uh, with the, the number of other policy networks and initiatives that are happening at, at EU level. We have heard smart town mobility, renewable energy communities, uh, the CAP network, the broadband competence office, Interreg, there are many. Let's say the Rural Pact is it's in place to really help uh, coordinate and work together on a number of topics and I'm about to end with just two quick slides. So as, as I mentioned, we organize uh, policy uh, conferences to really tackle and bring policymakers on board on the Rural Pact and the next one is uh, around depopulation will take place in Brussels. The registrations are still open, so you are very welcome to, to register and we will see you there. And this is going to be the opportunity where we are going to launch our online platform as well, focusing to help areas uh, um, uh, lagging a bit behind. Uh, there would be as well other events at the end of the year on the future of rural areas. And also on the practitioner side, we uh, already are coordinating two good practice webinars, one on social entrepreneurship, the other one on digital skills, bringing as well other commission services into these important topics. Last but not least, I just want to remind you an important event that will follow and build up on the conclusions and outcomes from this conference organized by the Swedish Presidency of the Council. And that would be a high level policy forum where we invite uh, as well uh, uh, different ministries in charge of EU structural funds to come to Spain, Siguenza, in a very rural area, in a very nice region in Spain. Uh, with a, a lot of good food to try. Uh, <laughs> so on, it would happen on the, between the 27th and the 29th. And, and again, you would all be welcome to contribute uh, and participate. Just last but not least, last slide. Um, all this information is really targeted to the members of the community. And there is a formal community uh, of the Rural Pact. You all need to register. Probably by now you would have received already a flyer uh, so if you are not a member of the community yet, you have there a QR code and you can register uh, as a member of the community and you will receive invitation to all these activities that we are organizing in the Rural Pact Support Office. And in the other side, you also see the QR code in, if, in case you want to contribute and be a stronger participant, a committer, and, uh, and propose uh, actions that you would like to implement or plan to implement to contribute to the Pact and the Vision. Thank you very much.